President George Bush. Uh, he's going to board that helicopter and head off uh, eventually to Andrews Air Force Base and uh, then Texas. Uh, uh, what do you think? John Roberts uh, had one job to do today and he uh, sort of screwed up. Wolf, I almost fell out of my chair. You know, it's only a 35-word oath. It's actually much shorter than the vice president's oath. And it's one of the most famous parts of the Constitution. But what Roberts did is he put the word faithfully. It's, it's faithfully execute the office of president. But he said, execute the office of president faithfully. And you saw Obama almost start to chuckle because he knew the oath. And they got it together. But as you pointed out, he was already president by that point. At, yep. at Jeff, hold on. Hold, hold on, Jeff. So. There, there's the shot. Uh, the uh, president of the United States, Barack Obama, the former president of the United States, George W. Bush, they're walking down those stairs. He's escorting the former president to that Marine Corps uh, helicopter that will be taking him off, uh, taking him over to Andrews Air Force Base. The Bushes have gone. They're gone from the White House, uh, Anderson. Uh, no more stuff there. They're packed up. They're out of there, and they're moving back to Texas. Uh, this uh, moment, I can't remember a new president escorting the old president out to the helicopter and saying goodbye to him in this way. And that's the way it's been throughout throughout the transition on both sides. So this has not happened uh, in a, in I, transition. I, I may be wrong, but I can't remember it, it unfolding quite this way. And I think it does show. A personal respect. He sharply disagrees with policies, as Paul Begala just said. But coming out there to say goodbye is is, is the right thing to do. There's Dick Cheney, uh, the former vice president of the United States. If you're just tuning in, you probably haven't heard. Uh, he had a back problem uh, moving some boxes into his new home in McLean, Virginia. The doctor said, "You know what? Get off your feet. Just spend a couple days or so in a wheelchair." And that's where he was. He'll be going in a motorcade uh, to his new home. Uh, after uh, he departs, then uh, former President Bush, former First Lady Laura Bush, will head on to the uh, Marine Corps helicopter. Yeah, there they are, the uh, new First Lady of the United States, Michelle Obama. People are going to be talking about uh, her outfit, no doubt about that. Uh, we'll leave it to others to make some uh, commentary. Uh, but on this day, we saw her beaming, and we saw those two sweet little girls, Sasha and Malia. How proud are they of their mom and dad? It was so great to see them smiling the entire time. And, um, and absolutely, you know, starting today, and even before today, Michelle Obama's outfit will be the talk of, uh, of the town. What's so stunning about this is that in Barack Obama's speech, he called for nothing less than the remaking of America. Yes. And here he is standing uh, with the outgoing president of the United States. It was a very sharp speech, as, yeah, as some, Bill Bennett there said. There were several implied uh, criticisms uh, of uh, the uh, eight years of the Bush administration certainly laced throughout that speech. Says, as for our common defense, we reject as false the choice between our safety and our ideals. But you remember he also reiterated the Constitution where he said, you know, the God-given promise, all are equal, all are free, all deserve a chance to pursue their full measure of happiness. And through this campaign, he has come back to the constitutional right is for everybody. Let's watch. Bush Sr. is already on board that chopper, so is uh, Barbara Bush. They'll be uh, taking that Executive One uh, U.S. Marine Corps helicopter. It's no longer called Marine One because it's only Marine One once the President of the United States is flying aboard that helicopter, uh, and, and he is now the former President of the United States. They'll take it uh, for a short ride, about 10 minutes or so, to Andrews Air Force Base, where they will board that huge 747, uh, the one that we know is Air Force One. It won't be called Air Force One once again because that plane carrying him back to Texas will not carry the president, only the former 
President of the United States. Uh, and as David Gergen points out, a very gracious moment by Michelle and Barack Obama, the President and First Lady of the United States, as they meet up with Jill Biden and Joe Biden, the Vice President of the United States. Uh, they will apparently wait uh, to see uh, that Executive One U.S. Marine Corps helicopter take off, head out to Andrews Air Force Base in Maryland for the journey back to Texas. Uh, it's all laced with enormous symbolism. This, this Capitol, this White House, it is now theirs. Yep. And you know, he takes office. And the helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> and when, when he's on the helicopter, it'll be a Marine One. I'm not sure if he asked the pilot how long he'll be because he wants it back soon. By the way, as you know, David, it's not just that one helicopter. He has a whole fleet of uh, U.S. Marine Corps clear. helicopters. Uh, and whenever he wants to go to Camp David uh, or any place else, uh, within helicopter range, he's got that helicopter, then he's got that huge 747 Air Force One at his disposal as well. You can only imagine what is going through uh, former President Bush's mind as he uh, sees Barack Obama, a man who, you think about it, two, three years ago, relatively unknown. I mean, the thought that he could become president, uh, very few people would have uh, said this would happen. Very few people thought. Uh, I, uh, George W. Bush thought that Hillary Clinton was, was uh, going to be the nominee. And uh, this, is a, this is a tough moment for him, uh, as he told us in his uh, many goodbye interviews, that um, while it's been a tough job for him, he, uh, he loved every minute of it, he said. And, um, it's interesting, uh, you know, they're about a half an hour behind the schedule that they had organized, uh, but uh, does it really make any difference, David Gergen? I don't think so. I think everybody is having a good time. They're watching the celebration. It's a day for history to unfold. Tomorrow, the President of the United States gets down to real business. He's got a series of meetings, as we know, and the enormous challenges facing him and the country on the foreign policy, national security front, and also on the economic front. Yes, he does. Actually, see the chopper now lifting off past the Capitol. Our vantage point, you can see it. But there by all indications, he relishes the chance to, to go into the Oval Office and get started. He wants to get moving. Yeah, he'll have lunch up on Capitol Hill, and then he'll make that drive yeah. over to the White House. And you know what? Pretty soon he'll be in the Oval Office himself. He'll be signing papers, uh, executive orders, making major decisions. Isn't that a great shot, Anderson? They're about, about to, to pass us right by, actually. This is, uh... Yeah, it's coming, heading our way uh, a little bit. I guess he's going to make a little tour. Maybe he'll fly over the White House uh, before he heads out to Andrews Air Force Base, which is actually the other way, the other side of Capitol Hill. But uh, I guess it would be symbolic and appropriate to see fly over the North Lawn, the South Lawn of the White interesting. House. interesting. All along the parade route, you see people turning and waving to the helicopter as it passes overhead. You know, as, as uh, Barack Obama said in his speech, he said this is a moment that will define a generation. Yes.